Hey guys, doing some changes in the shop. Want to talk about it? <laughs> Let me get some lights off in here. Make sure I'm not sitting the engine hoist in the garage door. In a minute. Oh, all right. Let's see if I can get a decent view here. All right. So, um, yeah, I uh, I moved the old blue willies over to the other side of the garage. Um, the owner requested a pause in the build. Um, he is trying to get the paint figured out, among some other things. You know, life, personal stuff, whatever. Um, so we're going to take a break from that one for a couple months and. Uh, I agreed to uh, store it for him and, and stick it over in the other bay. Uh, and that works out better for me because I, do, uh, I can do some projects on my flatty, Rango, or uh, the, uh, the new JK, or the Lexus or something for a couple months. So um, I'm not upset or sad about it at all. Um, and so it's just what happens with these big, huge builds, um, you know, building a car from absolute scratch uh is a long process and and it comes with its ups and downs so um that's all well and good uh yeah moving it over was a bit fun i uh i totally failed the first time i thought i was going to be all cool and just push it outside um uh out the one door and then just like swing a little sweet s turn and go back in the other door and uh with 37s and manual steering and no uh you know motivation of its own uh, well, it didn't work at all. So I just basically rolled it out into the alley and it was all sideways and in the way of stuff. And uh, I did get a cool picture, um, but um, I just had to push it right back in. And so what I ended up doing was just sticking it on um, some like uh, dollies, basically some wheel dollies that I have that I've used in the past to store uh, my flatty, you know, over in the corner in uh, previous garages that I've had and things like that. So um, I did that and it was, uh, of course, um, two of those were uh, under the axles for the JKU in the back of the Ford. And so I had to, had to figure out a way to lift up the axles enough in the back of the Ford by myself um, and, uh, and get those out. But it's always something. So um, it was a good way to spend the morning, a little distraction and all that. So yeah, that's a good little update. Um, possible things for... Rango, um, not too much stuff. I should probably just go through and check stuff. You know, it's been, that, that rig's been running around for 12, 12 years, I think, in its current iteration uh, without any major changes. Um, very early on, I think in the first year that I had it, I did do a, a new engine in it. The engine that I had was just the, uh, when I first built or rebuilt it, um, was just the original Buick that was in the, um, uh, in the donor vehicle. Uh, and so I did one, I think big trip on that engine. Um, the first one, and, uh, that was called uh, 2000 miles of nervous Nirvana. Um, I did back way back then. I think I did do a, a, a little blog about it. If I can find the, uh, find it or something, I'll post up, uh, a couple pictures and, or a link. But, uh, yeah, that was, uh, my first big solo trip like that in a, in, you know, in a vehicle that you just got done building in your garage with like, um, no tools and parts off Craigslist and what little tools you had were, you know, Harbor Freight and, and whatnot. So that was a pretty cool trip I did. Uh, I drove from, uh, here in Durango, Colorado to, um, the Montana Idaho border, kind of where I grew up over in that area, um, a little north, uh, to meet up with some friends. Um, and we did about 300 something miles of snow wheeling, uh, up and over the continental divide, a few, um, a few different passes, um, you know, chasing, chasing snow and, and too much, not enough, whatever epic trip. Um, one of the best trips I've ever taken, um, so far. 
And so, yeah, then, you know, drove it back, took um, a lot of lesser known, slower two lane highways. I mean, driving these things, no matter what you do to them on the interstate just isn't fun. Um, so I got off on a lot of like frontage roads and took my time and found, you know, um, cool old junkyards and just all the stuff you see. So that I really enjoyed that part of the trip and everything. Uh, wandered back through, I think, like the western western edge of uh, Wyoming. Uh, came in like Flaming Gorge area by Vernal um, and, and down Grand Junction and then back to here. So yeah, I don't, that was a long a long explanation. I'm sorry, but uh, anyways, after that, I I did a um, before, I think before the first ultimate adventure trip in 2014, I did a, a new used built in my garage with no tools and whatever I could scrounge up another Buick 225 for it and put a T18, uh, in it versus the SM 420 it had when I first built it. Um, the SM 420 used a, a custom adapter that was very, very short. Um, but it made the the front drive shaft uh, U joint very very small because of the reverse bulge on the um, on the side of the SM four twenty. Um, it just never worked right. Really, I mean, yeah, making an adapter with like a drill press and and brazing gears together and stuff, um, you know, never works out very well. So um, yeah, but after I did that, um, there was a little bit of prep and differences and and things along the way, a little bit of improvements, you know, here and there. Uh, but it's always been pretty much the same. Um, I really haven't done that much to it over the last um, 12 years, and I don't really plan to do much to it going forward. Um, there are a couple things that I'd like to do um, or did. One of them is I put new seats in it, the original low back seats. Uh, they were a very cheap set of like surplus um, clearance uh, EMPI low back seats. Um, they actually worked pretty well. They were a little bit big, like bulky for the, for the flat fender um, cabin area. So I um, recently, I think last year, this, this year before um, Easter Jeep Safari, I swapped um, into a very similar look looking set of seats that I had built uh, by PRP. It was a semi-custom seat. Um, they are a, a low back um, Roadster seat, which is one of their smallest uh, frame sizes. And then I also had them shorten the bottom cushion front to back, um, I believe three inches. It was an option they offered if you asked something about a like rear seat application or whatever, but um, it was basically just a really, really small seat. Um, and those fit much better. I was able to uh, kind of more center up the seats uh, in a flat fender, the engines offset like usually like an inch and a half um, where the pedals are and the foot box and the steering wheel, like trying to get everything centered um, and have both seats in the same position is, is challenging and so with the smaller seat i was able to do that i think i moved the center console over and centered it like three quarters of an inch or something like that so that was a good improvement they're comfy um a little tiny bit narrow uh for my bigger as i've gotten older behind um but uh overall happy um a lot more room because of the shorter um, seat bottom cushion um so yeah, other than that, the only other thing that I've wanted to change on Rango for many years, actually, I've never really actually had a problem with it, but I, when I built it, again, this was all Craigslist used. I was, you know, on a budget parts, and um, I put a open knuckle uh, Dana 30 uh, from like a CJ5, like, seven, like it was a drum brake version. Um, and uh, that was actually the genesis of um, my tracker sidekick based disc brakes was I wanted to do a newer, better disc brake conversion for that axle. Um, and so that was the first one I ever converted. Um, and yeah, so I, I've always been nervous about the Dana 30. It has 538 gears, it's low pinion, um, it runs a full-time locker, um, 
It has big old, you know, 35 inch crawlers on wide wheels. Um, all the things that, you know, make you nervous about a Dana 30. It is a pretty small light Jeep. And honestly, like I said, I have not really had any issues with it. I did, um, I did early on, I put a set of, uh, I believe it was nitro gear, uh, alloy axle shafts, axle shafts in it uh, with the larger 297 760X size U-joint. Um, and that was an alloy inner and outer, but still uh, both um, uh, 27 spline. And um, I, I used just a regular, I think I used the Spicer uh, 760X. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, not an alloy U-joint. And honestly, for 12 years and all the stuff I've done with my flat fender, uh, two ultimate adventures, you know, uh, who knows how many laps around all the trails in Moab, because that's kind of like my my close place that I like to hang out and wheel. Um, you know, everything I've done for the last uh, 12 years with that um, Jeep has been on that Dana 30, and I haven't had one broken axle uh, or ring gear or locker. Um, the only thing that I fight on that axle is um, the... Uh, it's a external locking hub and I have tried a lot of different things. I'm sure I'll get some comments below on what you think works best. Um, I think I've tried everything. Um, I've tried, you know, um, the, the hubs have been, uh, you know, uh, bottom tapped, uh, the bolts have been shanked. Um, the, I've tried studs. Um, I've tried pretty much every locking washer style known to man, uh, Nord locks, um, you know, the little star ones, the snap style, no washers. Um, I don't remember on the, on the front if I'd ever tried flange bolts. Um, I don't think that'll help. Um, but, uh, what I narrowed it down to, uh, because I have uh, similar setup on the rear axle. So the rear axle on Rango has been, um, is converted, uh, to a 30 spline full float with, a um, a flange style axle. And, and so no locking hub, basically it just bolts right to the end of the bearing hub. Um, just like any three quarter ton or one ton truck. And when I first started that, I fought, um, the same issue in the rear. Uh, and I was able to overcome that I did use a stud, um, but I also used a heavy hex nut. Um, basically like the general theory was like a little bit more clamping area. It wasn't so tiny, um, a little bit more meat, uh, in the, in the nut. Um, but, um, what I've narrowed it down to is that I think it comes down to the difference in material, uh, between the clamping surfaces. Um, and so the, the Warren, premium locking hub that I run. It's a great hub. I actually haven't ever broken the hub. Um, but I, I, I do fight the, the loosening issue of the fasteners. And then eventually it seems like, you know, it's probably chicken and egg, but eventually if they ever do get loose, then you start to get, see some, some signs of fatigue, uh, uh where the, where the thread transition is from the like shanked portion of the fastener to the threaded portion basically just sits there and rocks. Um, and eventually like that just is where they fail and then they break and they fall apart. Um, so didn't matter, uh, if that was studs or, um, a bolt screw, whatever. Um, so what I've narrowed it down to is I think it's the material of it's the, it's basically the cast material of the locking hub being softer or soft enough that it just doesn't like to retain, um, bolt t tension, torque tension, I guess would be the right word. Um, and so eventually no matter what you do, it just kind of loosens up. Um, and so, you know, that, that's the only issue I've ever had. Um, it's tolerable, like pull the, if you pull the bolts out and, and redo them every two or three seasons, like you won't have an issue. Um, but you do keep an eye on them on long trips and stuff like that. But 
Anyways, that's actually not even what I was going to fix. It was just the, the only thing I've had problems with on the Dana 30, but um, it's always made me nervous. And so I think I'm going to take the opportunity to put a Dana 44 in the front. Um, it matches the rear um, for some weird reason. That just sounds cool to me. Um, and so I picked up a Roxor uh, front axle and I'm just going to build that to be kind of the next the next little step up. Um, it already has 538 gears. I have a, a full case locker for it instead of a lunchbox. The locker is actually cool and is a bit of an experiment. Also, um, it is a uh, Kaiser locker out of Brazil, um, which is a copy or uh, their version of the old uh, Warren uh, roller uh, locker design. So instead of teeth, um, it uses rollers, um, as a, in a sprag system. Um, so it's supposed to be much, much smoother engagement and disengagement than, uh, teeth. Um, and there's no, um, uh, in theory that the teeth don't have to align for it to lock. The only thing that has to happen is the 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 locker just has to have to has to move far enough to cam on the rollers so uh a lot less clanking and banging um, not that i get that much of it in the front um, with the rear uh, selectable locker open most of the time i don't honestly notice that a lot but it should be cooler should be better it's a fun experiment um, something you don't see in the states too much um, and then i do have uh 30 spline alloy shafts 30 spline or yeah, 30 spline inner shafts, 30 spline outer shafts. Um, I think I'm going to try and convert it to Dana 30 knuckles, outer knuckles, um, so I can have a separate tie rod and drag link steering, um, do my brakes uh, on it. Um, that should all be normal. Um, and then a set of uh, 30 spline capable front spindles. And then this, for now, this same dang locking hub. <laughs> <laughs> that I have, that I have problems with anyway. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's all for naught, I guess. Um, there is a couple more things I think that I'm going to try on the locking hub. Um, there's just a part of me that, you know, the, the locking hub, uh, or external hubs on the front and the back being the same, you know, parts I can carry. I only have to carry one bearing hub as a spare, one spindle as a spare, and it fits all four corners. Um, it's just a little dorky, probably meaningless thing, but um, if I was starting from scratch again, I would definitely uh, just do internal um, spline hubs or something like that. Uh, it's just a rabbit hole to go down sometimes when you're nostalgic about certain things. So um, yeah, so that's about it. I, I would like to do the front axle. Um, whether or not that'll be first or not, I don't know. Um, I have the axle just sitting right over there. I have all the parts, um, so I can do, I can do the, uh, I can do the, um, all the assembly without having to, um, take anything apart and then just slide the axle under, um, whenever I'm ready. But having the running driving Jeep over on this side of the garage, um, also lets me get it in and out a lot easier. There's a lot more room, even though I'm super messy and stuff seems like it always just jumps off the shelves everywhere when I'm not looking. Um, but it does give me some opportunities to use this bay um, for some more complex uh, projects on the other vehicles. Um, LX45 doesn't really need much. Um, it is gonna go on probably a big trip in October. So I need to do like a, you know, once over on it before I go. Um, but the new project and the new focus is probably going to be some stuff on the JKU, um, the plain Jane Jeep that I've been working on. And so, uh, recently I picked up a pair of, um, ultimate Dana 60 axles for that. Uh, they're, a, they're a JK Bolton, um, ultimate Dana 60 axle pair, um, e lockers, you know, all the stuff's already there. Um, so those, if I wasn't me <laughs> would just bolt in. Um, but there are some things on those that I would like to tweak just a little bit, um, mainly with the suspension brackets 
and um, some geometry there. So I'm going to be able to, now that I can get um, this out of the way, unload the axles, move big heavy axles over and perhaps set them somewhere um, more convenient, I can do all my um, nerding out on those and maybe some 3D scanning of the original brackets uh, and how I want to change um, the geometry on those. Um, so I think that's the, that's the update for the garage. Um, yeah, it'd been a while since I'd done a long video uh, like this and kind of told, was able to share um, what was going on and stuff like that. So um, as always, if you have any you know questions, uh, drop a comment below. Um, yeah, if there's anything you want to see more, um, if I'm not working on, um, a customer vehicle per se, um, like the old blue willies, uh, it does afford me the opportunity because I'm not like billing hours. Um, so, uh, it does afford me the opportunity to try some more things with, um, how I document those, uh, projects so I can film more, um, instead of doing just like the daily update, um, style videos and kind of showing you what I did in the end, which is, you know, after I turn the clock off, if you will, um, I can show you kind of some more processes along the way, um, how I do things, um, you know, little tips and tricks. I can stick a camera on my forehead and do some point of view stuff. Um, yeah, all those things. So if you have any ideas or what you'd like to see, you know, like I said, drop a comment below. If you like this kind of stuff and like following along, uh, please give the video a thumbs up. It really helps with the, with whatever magic happens behind the scenes at YouTube. Um, if you want to be notified if we do, or when I do other videos, um, uh, there's a bell and then of course, you know, subscribe to the channel and support guys doing crazy stuff in their garage. All right. So thanks for following along. We'll catch you on the next one.